All right. Shalom. Shalom, everyone. Welcome to House of Rest, where we teach and preach that Yahusha is alive, alive, alive. And I just want to welcome you to day 160 as we talk about Deuteronomy or discuss or study over Deuteronomy 33. And we'll be discussing probably verses one through two today. As we look into scripture, we see that Moshe, before he passes away, he blesses the children or, or the tribes of Yashariah according to their tribes. Which is pretty pretty neat when you read over it and and get a good understanding of of what Moshe is, is do, doing when he does that. It's it's kind of the same way as you know when we bless our brother and sister when we're praying for them, right? And so um as I was reading I really didn't get past verse two today in my studies. I, I actually studied up read over the whole thing, but I just kind of focused on two two scriptures and you know in the first part it, it called Moshe the man of Elohim, right? The man of Elohim. And so we we come across certain scriptures where we hear them call certain people the man of Elohim and that's most most of the time that's associated with someone that comes into place or speaks for Yah, right? Um in other other words like his spokesperson like a prophet. And so we we find this throughout scripture and different scriptures and we'll we'll kind of touch on that a little bit. But then we also see in verse two where it kind of gives us this um this uh where it talks about how Yahuwah came uh, from Sinai and rose up from Sire unto them, right? And then it talk, has this verse in here that is kind of, you can kind of relate to in in the book of Enoch and the book of Jude. And even when, you know, Yahusha said that he would return, right? With with thousands of his saints. And, and here it says 10,000. Now, we, we know from previous studies that when it talks about Ten thousands, or 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 whatever to describe them, they didn't have a word for millions back then. So they would say ten thousands and thousands, you know, to 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 overlap to explain how you know that basically it's a multitude, a big multitude. And so as we we look in the scripture and as we get a a good firm understanding on on this, we see that. Not only in the book of Enoch was it uh, prophesied that Yahoo would come from Sinai, but it, it also is in other scriptures tying up, you know, the the you know how we 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 thread it together. And so it, it shows and even Exodus it, it gives us the description of when he was on Mount Sinai and how it, it you know, like the mountain was was a furnace, a fiery furnace. So we we see these things, and we recognize it. And and so scripture is always going to give you, uh, it'll interpret itself if you look into it. What we want to look into, what we try to tap into, is understanding the words that that are brought forth in the scripture to get a, a clearer understanding on on what's being presented in scripture so that we so that when we're studying right we we have a, a clear understanding that uh it's not just calling moshe the man of elohim it, it's describing him as someone that is close with yah right or even like i just said about the ten thousands it, it's describing a multitude plenty and so you know some people take to take everything in scripture that they read and just they just they see it as literal and some things are you know uh, messages encoded within within certain words and when i say messages i mean um certain words represent certain things in scripture and and so just like here where it says 
uh, from his right hand went a fiery law. Well, his word is described as a fire, right? And and so, and Yah is uh, described as an all-consuming fire, right? So we know that with, with Yah in operation and the way that, that things go, there are certain certain things that are given in scripture that we have to we have to look into to understand the importance behind it. Now you read words like death and well it doesn't necessarily mean that your death is in the flesh. It means that you can have a, an eternal type of death. So that that's what I mean by we have to look into these matters. As we look into it, we'll get a clear understanding. Now, let's jump into scripture. I got a little silence issue going on today. All right. We're going to go to Deuteronomy chapter 33. And I got one through five on this slide. We'll read. We'll go through the whole thing, but we'll probably only study over two of these scriptures. Hallelujah. So it says, and this is the blessing where with Moshe, the man of Elohim, blessed the children of Yashrael before his death. So this was a literal death that was coming, right? But he did what? He blessed, he blessed the children of Yashrael before his death. And he said, Yahuwah came from Sinai and rose up from Seir unto them. He shined forth from Mount Paran. And he came with 10,000 of his saints, or Kadashim, from his right hand went a fiery law for them, right? The Torah, right? He gave us uh, instructions that he wrote with his own finger. And, well, Moshe uh, broke them when he found out that when they came down off the mountain, they were, uh, when they, you know, when they were dancing to the calf and having the orgy and doing all that other stuff well moshe was just like uh -uh. and he broke the commandments he was the first one to break the ten commandments okay i heard dr pitch just say that so i had to run with it okay so then look what it says in verse three yeah he loved the people he loved the people all of his saints are in your hand right and we we have read that we have touched on that before and um on the Sabbath devotional, where we talked about you can't be plucked out of Yah's hand. And they sat down at your feet. Everyone shall receive of your words, your day, the daily bread, right? Moshe commanded us a Torah, even the inheritance of the assembly of Yako. And he was king in Yasharun. He was king in Yasharun when the heads of the people and the tribes of Yasharel were gathered together. So, here where it's at, and he was king of Yasharun. I'm gonna, I want to look into this a little bit more because immediately when you go back to verse 4, it says Moshe commanded us a Torah, even the inheritance of the assembly of Jacob. Well, at verse 5, it seems that they're, they're describing Moshe to be the king, right? The king in Yasharun when he leads. Uh, when the heads of the people in the tribes of Yashar were gathered together. So it sounded like it was describing uh, Moshe as that, that king over the, I remember what we talked about Yashar is that's the children of Yashar El along with the multitude that came out with them that joined to Yashar El. So you got Yashar Un instead of Yashar El, right? All right, so let me see. Deuteronomy 3. All right. All right. So, starting from verse 1, and we know what that word blessing is, Bercha, right? Bercha, Bercha, right? Blessing, source of blessing, blessing, prosperity, blessing, praise of. Elohim, a gift, a present, treaty of peace. Well, you know how you could bless somebody like with a gift, but we're looking at uh, the praise of Elohim, right? Because he is the, the, the source of our blessing. 
Hallelujah. So there's Strong's H1293. Strong's H1293. All right. Bless is where we're with Moshe. What does Moshe mean? Drawn. Remember, you were drawn out of the water. The prophet and lawgiver, leader of the Exodus. So that ties into what we were talking about him being the king over Yasharon. All right, so let's look at this. Okay, and this is the blessing where we're Moshe, the man, man, ish, ish, right? The servant. Let's look at it as the servant of the servant of Elohim, right? So we know that it's talking about Yahuwah. Right, blessed, blessed. Now, here we go. Barach, Barach, right? To bless, to kneel, to be blessed, to bless oneself, to bless, to be blessed, to be adored, to cause to kneel, to bless oneself, to pray, salute, and it can also be to curse. So, we know that this blessing was more of a salute, a salute uh, to to the children of Yashorel because he was about to pass uh, or he was about to go into death, right? Like a salutation, like a, you know, where you greet and then when you get ready to leave, bless you, you know? Um, but he, he actually did it like a, a prayer over them, right? Very blessed children, children, Ben, when we talked about that. And it, it's, it's speaking of uh, members, like children of Yashara, so the members of the, the, the tribes, like right now, a member of a guild, order, or class. All right, man of Elohim blessed the children of Israel before his, here we go. Let's look at this word before. Panim, remember we, we talked about being in front of, in the presence of. So while he was still in their presence before his death, right? While he was still in his presence, while he was still in their presence, he mavet, for before death, mavet. My beat, right? Uh, in other words, before he went to the realm of the dead or before he died. And he said, and he said, Yahuwah came from Sinai. Now let's look at these words, Sinai. Or Sinai. Sinai, right? It means thorny. But it's the mountain where Moshe received the law from Yahuwah located at the southern end of the Sinai or said Sinai, Sinai Peninsula, which is in Arabia, between the horns of the Red Sea, exact site unknown. All right. And rose up, that's Zerach, Zerach, right? Zerach, almost uh, like the name of one of Judah's sons, Zerah, right? Which means to rise, to come forth, to break out, to arise, to rise up, to shine, to come out. Rose up, that's, uh, sorry, Sinai is strong, H5514. And Rose up is strong, H2224. And from sight, seer. It means hairy or shaggy, right? And it's in the land of Edom, south of the Dead Sea.
Seir, right? Rough, a mountain of Judea, Edemia, <laughs> and its Aboriginal occupant, also one in Palestine, Seir. So, look, it's also a mountain, a mountain in northern Judah, lying westward from Kiryat Jerim. Yerim. All right. And then it says, he went unto them, he shined for Strong's H3313, Yafa, Yafa, right? Uh, the shine, for shine out, cause the shine, send out beams, send out beams. So it's saying that Yah shine like he it it it, it, it it's he showed himself, right? That that's what it's saying. He showed himself to the children of Israel. Right? He shined forth, he or he showed himself from Mount, which is Har, Mountain, Har. Paran, Paran is a place of caverns, wilderness area bounded on the north by Palestine, on the west by the wilderness of Etham, on the south by the desert of Sinai, and on the east by the valley of Arabah. The exodus was through this area, and probably all 18 stops were in this area. So it sounds like he, he um, I wish I could find him map of these three areas um but so look you got three different places you got sinai i can't say it right sinai and then you got seer and then you got paran it, it seems like these places kind of have like a, a triangulation or or something because it said and he came right and he came with ten thousand so let's look at this rip Rebaba, Rebaba, right? Multitude, myriad, right? Multitude. So, and then look, you have uh, down here, it says abundance and numbers, specifically a myriad, whether definite or indefinite. It could be many, million, or multiply 10,000. So, if you multiply 10,000 by 10,000, you got, what, 100,000? I don't know. Huh? trying to add <laughs> but you got you got a good amount but if you multiply in other words it's saying that that word could be multiplied so there can be m more than ten thousand and we know that there were more than ten thousand because when you go back in numbers and you do the at you you know add up you got over you know you got over a million of yasharia that comes along now some of you may say well all of them were were uh you know saint, saints right because some of them had uh different iniquities that they allowed but y'all was removing them uh, along with it but it, it's, it's saying here with ten thousands right with ten thousand it, it's saying that it, there was abundance of saints from his right hand y'all mean y'all mean Yah mean right from his right hand, and, and we did a study on that called the the right hand of Yah. You can go and look that up. It's also a study on Yahusha is Yahuwah. That that kind of is the first part to the right hand of Yah, right? So it says that he from his right hand went a fiery. Is dot, is dot, fiery fire of law or fire was a law. <laughs> so, fire. Let's see what this other one is. All right, because the first one was uh, Strong's H seven nine nine. Now we're gonna look at Strong's H seven eight four. Ish, ish, like flame, supernatural fire, supernatural fire.
And no, is it there? Remember when they said that uh, Yahushua walked on? They said, "Did not our hearts burn when we talked with him along the, the way?" Right. So, and this is dot dot right dot, which is decree, edict, regulation, usage, rule, which is strong H one eight eight one. So it could be a royal edict or a statute or commandment, right? Commission. Remember, we we read in uh, that they were that he commissioned Joshua, right? And they were co gave, given commissions too, right? So from his right hand went a fiery law for them, a decree, fiery uh, a commandment. Yea. He loved the people all his saints. Off, off, right? Also, or so much the more, furthermore, right? That's cool. That could be what they gave it. Furthermore, he loved, he loved Chabab to love fervently. He cherished, he cherished, right? The people, all his saints, strong age, six, nine, one, eight, Kadosh, Kadosh, all his holy set apart, right? All his set apart. That ain't funny. Strong age, six, nine, nine, four. This is Kodesh, Kodesh. Um, almost similar, holiness separated, sacred, right? So that's Kodesh Strong H six nine four four, and then here where you got saints in verse three is Strong H six nine one eight, which is Kodosh, which also you know it, it just sacred, holy, holy one, saint set apart. So pretty much the same, same deal, right? Only difference is you got Kodesh and now you got Kodosh, which is Kodesh is the plural form of Kodosh. So you got S on there. Well, both of them got an S on it. Let's see. All right. So you got Kodesh. Okay. So I see they added holiness, sacredness, separateness, right? All right. So that, that's why it's like that. a sacred place of thing, really abstract to sanctity. Okay. So that's why, right? And he, okay. Yeah, he loved the people. All his saints are in thy hand. Yod, Yod, right? And in his uh, strength or in his power. And they sat down at thy feet. Taha, taha, right? To be led or be assembled. That's strong H4, H8497. Eight, eight, and that's to, to be led or be assembled. Hallelujah. Right? And the saints are in thy hand, and they sat down at thy feet. R regale, regale, right? Uh, it could be a foot, leg <laughs> of a seraphim, cherubim, idol, animals, table, but we're talking about uh, of Elohim, right? Anthropomorphic. So, Strong eight seven two seven two. Let's see. By invocation, a step by euphemistically the Pudina be able to endure according as after coming follow broken great toe haunt journey leg position. So we're gonna look at it as follow. They said 
before and they gather together and follow, right? Let's see what that's going to get. All right. Yeah, to be assembled. So they assemble and follow. They assemble and follow. Everyone shall receive. Everyone shall receive. Nasa. Everyone shall bear up or shall sustain, endure, be supported. Hallelujah. All right, so everyone shall be Nasa, right? Supported, sustained, able to endure. Everyone shall receive of thy word. So look at that. The bara. Excuse me, y'all. Dabara, right? Dabara, which is word or words. And remember what his word is. His word is our bread. It's our daily bread that we're able to receive of him when we're before him. Okay, Moshe commanded. Strong, Saba. Strong's eight six six eight zero Saba, right? Commanded, charge, gave orders, lay charge, give charge to order, right? A law, Moshe commanded us a law. Strong's H, Torah, Torah, right? Torah, law, direction, instruction. <laughs> Law, direction, instruction, even the inheritance, right? Morasha, Morasha, right? A possession, heritage. A possession, right? Of the congregation. Kehila, Kehila of the Congregation Assembly. Of Jacob, which we know that's Yeko, right? He a holder supplier. And he was king. Melech, Melech. Strong's H4428, and he was king in Yesharun, which means the upright one, symbolic name for Israel, describing her ideal character. Yeshurun, Yeshurun. When the heads, Strong's, Seven eight seven two one eight Rosh Rosh right. Uh, and here it, it will be talking about the uh, the heads of the divisions, the elders, the chief, right? The chief. When the chiefs other people and the tribes Shabbat. Shebet, Shebet, um, right here, clan or tribe. Of uh, Israel were gathered Asaph, Asaph gathered, assembled together. Yahad, right? Union, like Echad, what we what we would describe as Echad, right? Union, unitedness, together, all together, alike. And you notice whenever let whenever Yah is, is is 
operating and, and moving and about to pour out his power where everybody is gathered together. All right. So we're going to start right now. Let's look at a couple of the, the references uh, for it. And this is the blessing we're with Moshe, the man of Elohim. Bless the children of Yashar El before his death. We're going to go because this this kind of reminds you of what what Yako did, right? When he got ready to bless his sons before his death. Let's look. We got Genesis. Genesis 49. Twenty-eight. Let's look. All right, it said, all these are the 12 tribes of Yashariah, Yash and this is what their father spoke to them, and he blessed them. He blessed each one according to his own blessing, right? He blessed each one according to his own blessing. So this, this is what Moshe is doing is kind of similar to what their father, Jacob, their great-grandfather, their patriarch, the children of Yashariah's, patriarch jacob did with each and every one of his 12 sons where he blessed them according right accordingly so so we see we see that right so now let's look at this this second part where i said well with moshe the man of elohim let's talk about that because if you go to first kings first kings Chapter 13, verses 1 through 4. Watch this. See and see a man of Elohim. See, see right here how it says, uh, was we'll, we'll see what I'm talking about, where it says, and, and see a man of Elohim went from yet Yahuda to Bet El by the word of Yahuwah, while Jeroboam was standing by the slaughter place to burn incense, and he cried out against the slaughter place by the word of Yahuwah. See, so the man of Elohim. Is, is actually a prophet of Yah because he's going to cry out for him, to speak out for him. And he cried out against the slaughter place by the word of Yahuwah and said, Oh, slaughter place, slaughter place. Thus said Yahuwah, see a son is to, to be born to the house of David. Yoshiahu is his name. And on you, he shall slaughter the priests of the high places who burn incense on you and men's bones be burned on you. And he gave a sign the same day saying, this is the sign which Yahuwah has spoken. See the, the slaughter place is split apart and the ashes on it poured out. And it came to be when the sovereign Jeroboam or the king Jeroboam heard the saying of the man of Elohim who cried out against the slaughter place in Bet El that he stretched out his hand from the slaughter place saying, seize him. Then his hand, which he stretched out toward him, dried up so that he was unable to bring it back to him. So, guys, this is I just want you to see that as we, we read over this and it talks about the man of Elohim is pointing out that these these people are goals and representation. So just like Moshe, he went in representation of Yahuwah to speak all that he told him to say. Let's look at another one. Joshua chapter 14. Joshua chapter 14, because even Caleb describes Moshe as a man of Elohim, right? So watch this. Uh, Joshua chapter 14, verse 6. And the children of Yahuda came unto Joshua and Gigel, and Caleb, the son of Yephunah, the kent Kenizite said unto him, Thou knowest the thing that Yahuwah said unto Moshe, the man of Elohim, concerning me and thee and Kadesh Barnea. So even even uh, Moshe, he de declared Moshe to be the man of Elohim, right? So we see that. Now we got another one in Judges. Judges chapter 13, verses 6 through 8. Then the woman came and told her husband, saying, A man of Elohim came unto me, and his countenance was like the countenance of an angel of God, or the angel of Elohim. Very terrible, but I asked him not whence. He was not told he me his name. 
But he said unto me, Behold, thou shalt conceive a bear and son, and thou drink no wine nor strong drink, neither eat any unclean thing, for a child shall be a Nazarite to Elohim from the womb to the day of his death. And Manoah entreated Yahuwah and said, O oh my Elohim, let, O oh my, my Adonai, let the man of Elohim which thou didst sin come again unto us and teach us what we shall do unto the child that shall be born. And yeah, Elohim hearkened to the voice of Manoah and the angel of Elohim. Now I want y'all to see something because right here in verse 8, Manoah asked that he said that Yahuwah said the man of Elohim that came before, right? And it says that Yahuwah hearkened to his voice and the angel of Elohim. So when it when it describes a man of Elohim, it's talking about a messenger of Yah, right? A messenger, right? Malach. That's what the angel of Elohim is. The word is Malach, strong H4397, and it means messenger. It could also mean prophet, priest, or teacher, right? So when it calling Moshe a man of Elohim, it, it's saying the prophet. Or, or the teacher, right? The one that, that gives the instruction. It can also mean ambassador or king, right? So in other words, the messenger, the one that is uh, coming for, for Yah. Now you got another one. First Samuel chapter 2, verse 27. And there came a man of Elohim unto Eli and said unto him, thus says, Yahuwah, did I plainly appear unto the house of thy father when they were in Egypt in Pharaoh's house? Now, right here is showing that the man of Elohim, every time you notice that they say thus says or that somebody coming to speak in representation of Yahuwah, right? So, so this is what we're looking at here when we describe that. So now we got a clear understanding of the man of Elohim that's somebody that speak or a messenger of Yah, right? So now let's look. And he said, Yahuwah came from Sinai and rose up from Seir unto them. He shined forth from Mount Paran, and he came with 10,000 of his Kadashim from his right hand with a fiery law for them. So let's look at a couple of scriptures, <laughs> reference scriptures that touch, touches on this. Uh, and the first part will be, and Yahuwah came from Sinai. So, so let's look at that. You got Exodus, Exodus chapter 19, verses 18 through 20. And it says, And Mount Sinai was altogether on smoke because Yahuwah descended upon it in fire and smoke thereof ascended as the smoke of a furnace in the whole mount quite greatly. And when the voice of the trumpet sounded long and wet, louder and louder, Moshe spake. And Elohim answered by a voice. And Yahuwah came down upon Mount Sinai on the top of the mount. And Yahuwah called Moshe up to the top of the mount. And Moshe went up. So look, it, that goes with. And he said, Yahuwah came from saying me. Right? So, so there you go. You had an invert. And Mount Sinai was all together on smoke. Because therefore... Right. And verse 20 is that Yahuwah came down upon Mount Sinai, right? Sinai, Sinai. So look at that. So you see where uh, where he came down, right? He came down. Uh, so so in other words, he came from Sinai, right? And rose up from Seir, right? So let's look at another one. Um, Psalm 68. Psalm 68. Psalm 68, verse 8. The earth shook, the heavens also dropped at the presence of Elohim, right? Even Siani itself was moved at the presence of Elohim the Elohim of Israel. So we also see another uh, comparison there, right? And then look, you got Enoch. I'm going to have to pull that up on my phone. But Enoch gives a description. And Enoch 1 and 4. Let's see. Enoch 1 and 4. 
I had to pull that up on my phone. Enoch 1 and 4 says, Who were here at the tread upon Mount Sione, right? Appear with his host and be manifested in the strength of his power from heaven. So even Enoch declared that Yahuwah would, would um, come or tread upon Mount Sione, right? And, and it, it happened according to the historical records in Exodus, right? All right, so now let's look at the second part where he was on at sea ear, right? So you got Deuteronomy chapter 2, Deuteronomy chapter 2, verses 1 through 4. Then we turned and took our journey into, uh, into the wilderness by the way of the Red Sea, as Yahuwah spake unto me and could pass Mount Seir, right? Mount Seir many days. Right, and Yahuwah spake unto me, saying, Ye have compassed this mountain long enough, turn you northward and command thou the people. Right, it says, Command thou the people, saying, Ye are to pass through the coast of your brother and the children of Esau, which dwell in Seir, right, which dwell in Seir, and they shall be afraid of you. Take ye good heed unto yourselves, therefore. So, so look at there. We see you too that he rose up from seat, say ear. Because guess what? He traveled as a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. So we know that this was this happened as well. All right. Now let's look at the, the other part where it say he shined forth from Mount Paran. Right? You got numbers. Chapter 10, verse 12. Right? And the children of Israel took their journeys out of the wilderness of Sione, right? Sione, Sinai, and the cloud rested in the wilderness of Paran, right? In the wilderness of Paran. So there you go. Now they were in Paran as well. Now you got another uh, part, which is. And he came with 10,000 of his saints from his right hand when they fired with law for that, right? So we're going to kind of focus on, and he came with the 10,000 of his saints. Let's go to Daniel real quick. Daniel chapter 7, verse 10. A fiery stream, right? A fiery stream issued and came forth from before him. Thousands and thousands ministered unto him. And 10,000 times 10,000 stood before him. Judgment was set and the books were open. So remember we said that sometimes you had to multiply the 10,000. So multiply. So 10,000 times 10,000. And right here it says thousands and thousands. And then he goes ministered on them and 10,000 and 10,000 stood before him. So you already he already had thousands and thousands there serving him, and then now he got ten thousand times ten thousand standing before him. But what 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 issued uh and came forth from before him was a fiery stream. His word is a fiery what and it and it is is like a, a living waters, remember? So it's like a fiery stream that issues forth. Hallelujah, that fiery law decree. Hallelujah. All right, let's look at another one. You got Acts, and this is where young Stephen is just giving a, a recount of things, and that's Acts chapter 7, verse 53. Who have received the law by the disposition of angels and have not kept it. So, in other words, he, he talked about that fiery law that was issued, right? All right, so now let's look at another one. We got Revelation chapter 5. Revelation chapter 5, verse 11. And it says, and I beheld, and I heard the voice of many angels round about the throne, and the beasts and the elders, and the number of them were 10,000 times, 10,000 and thousands of thousands. 
right? So that there again, we're talking, we're, we're saying that it doesn't just necessarily mean right here we see this word 10,000 that is talking about 10,000. It could be millions, right? It could be millions. And then what what did Jude say? Jude in verse 14, he, he goes and he talks about what Enoch said. Jude verse 14, and Enoch also the seventh from Adam prophesied of these saying, behold, Yahuwah come with ten thousands of his saints, right? And that is actually said in Enoch chapter two, verse one. Behold, he comes with ten thousand of his saints to execute judgment upon him and to destroy the wicked and reprove, reprove all the carnal for everything which the sinful and wicked have done and committed against him. So look at that, right? Hallelujah, guys. This is this this study has started off pretty good. Pretty good. I pray it was good to y'all. Um, I just I thank y'all that we're able to still keep going. Hallelujah. There have been many things that tried to come and interfere, but I thank y'all for that. We're gonna end at verse two today. We'll jump into verse three. Well, you know what? Let's let's go to verse three. Let's just go to verse three. So he said, yea, he loved the people. All his saints are in your hand. And they sat down at your feet. Everyone shall receive of your word. You know what? Let's, let's go. Let's do it. All right. So let's look at that. What, what do we got? We got Psalm 47 and 4. Psalms 47. And for look what it said, he shall choose our inheritance for us, the excellent excellency of Jacob, whom he loved. Selah, right? Right there, say, yeah, he loved the people, right? All his Kadashim are in your hand. So we see what Psalm 47 and 4 is saying. He shall choose our inheritance for us, our possession, our heritage, right? Our possession, our heritage our estate for us, the excellency of Jacob, whom he loved, right? Say lie. All right. Let's look at another one. We got Hosea. Hosea. Chapter 11, verse 1. When Israel was a child, then I loved him and called him my son, or called my son out of Egypt. Right when Israel was a child, and I loved him and called my son out of Egypt. So we we see that Yah loved his children, Yashar'el. Right, and he said, "All his saints are in your hand." All right, so let's look at um, uh, let's look at. First Samuel chapter two, verse nine. Second, first Samuel chapter two, verse nine. Look what it said. He will keep the feet of his saints, and the wicked shall be silent in darkness, for by strength shall no man prevail. And so when it says all his Kadashim are in your hand, it's saying that all the Kadashim are 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 in his strength. They're in the, you know, the power of his hand. No one can pluck them out, right? No one can plug them out. And then you got right here, and they sat down at your feet. Everyone shall receive of your word. So let's look at Luke. Luke chapter 10, verse 39. Now let's look what it says. It says, and she had a sister called Mary, which also sat at Yahusha's feet and heard his word. So it's just like right here where it's talking about they sat down at his feet, right? They sat down at his feet. They they were they assembled before him and learned from him. And so this is the same thing that, that you see Mary doing when she sat before. And that's when Martha, you know, you're going to just let her sit there and do this. Why? why? And he said, listen, she, uh, she, she's seeking things of life. <laughs> Right, that word. 
All right, and he said, everyone shall receive of your word. That's Proverbs. Let's go to Proverbs chapter 2, verse 1. My son, if thou wilt receive my words and hide my commandments with thee, so that thou incline thy ear unto wisdom and apply thine heart to understanding. Hallelujah. So that's what we're supposed to do when we receive his word. We're supposed to apply our heart to understanding. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, guys. Um, I'm going to stop right there at verse 3, and we'll, we'll pick back up from uh, verse 4 tomorrow. We'll pick back up from verse 4 tomorrow. Hallelujah. Thank y'all for this, this fellowship. Hallelujah. We're at that time of the night. When you hear the sound of that shofar, hallelujah, like, share, subscribe, YouTube do not recommend our videos, so we need help getting the messages out to the people, hallelujah. As one of my sisters said, there are many people in the United States that don't even know who Yahusha is or what he did what what he did for for all of us hallelujah so guys i truly thank y'all for joining up with us and it's always an honor to serve alongside you always remember to look up for your redemption draws nine i love you yahoo loves you don't forget to say thank you yahusha love you guys we'll be talking soon shalom shalom